Test, test. We good? All right. We are live. We are back. We are ready, hopefully, to get through part two of three of Psalm 18. This is just getting us in the in the breaking up chapter mode for Psalm 119, whenever we finally get there. <laughs> Fortunately, Psalm 119 is already kind of broken down into little sections. So, um, but... Uh, before we get started, I like to do this every so often just to let the church know what the uh, what the reach and what the uh, goals of the uh, of the audio and video ministry for the church is. Um, I didn't print everybody out one because honestly I forgot. Um, <laughs> uh, but if you would like a copy, I can get you a copy. It would take me like two seconds to print it off. Um, sermon. Uh, this was our. This is a. Uh, these numbers are based from on from the last time I gave y'all projected numbers, which was end of October, um, to the thirty first to today. Uh, so we got no, November, December, and all of January um, uh, with these numbers. So they're going to be a little higher, but these num I actually look month to month. Our numbers for the last couple of months have grown a lot. It's very very encouraging to see. So sermon audio, um, the webcast side, which is the 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 new thing that. Sermon Audio rolled in with their big $50 subscription. It's basically another place for us to live live stream to. Uh, hello, webcast viewers, if you're on there. Um, uh, uh, the interactions for the last three months, we got 110 views, and that is filtered for five-minute-plus views. So they have to at least view for five minutes for the view to register as a view. So uh, 110 views on there. Uh, interactions to date with webcast is uh, 374 views. Uh, and the countries reach are the United States, Canada, the Netherlands, and the United Kingdom. Now, webcast, to be clear, is not our largest numbers. But we're I think we've only been doing that for like a handful of months. So those numbers are respectable So for, for that amount. Uh, sermon audio uploads. Now this is uploading the MP3s and the videos. They do bust it down into two different things, but these are aggregate numbers. Um, uh, for the last three months, we saw 2,746 downloads uh, from the Church's Sermon Audio page. Um, we reached 52 different countries, the United States, the United Kingdom, Ireland, Canada, Spain, Australia, Saudi Arabia, the Netherlands, Italy, Brazil, Germany, France, Romania, Slovenia, Ghana, Mexico, Singapore, India, Kenya, Cambodia, the Cayman Islands, Nigeria, the Philippines, the United Arab Emirates, Bangladesh, Belgium, the Bahamas, Croatia, Jamaica, Japan, North Macedonia, uh, Malaysia, New Zealand, Trinidad and Tobago, uh, Ukraine, Guatemala, Guyana, Mexico, Puerto Rico, Sweden, Zambia, Russia, South Africa, Belarus, Finland, Indonesia, Moa Mako, um, Nor Norway, Switzerland, and Taiwan. Um, our total interactions to date from Sermon Audio is 22,300 plus downloads in the time that we've been doing it. Um, obviously, being the oldest of our audio video ministries, it's, it's the most robust. Uh, the church's website got 122 uh, vis unique new visitors in the last uh, three months. Um, with a, a total page views from those visitors, uh, 346. We reached nine cu countries. 14.72% um, of those uh, 346 uh, visits were from outside of the U.S. Uh, the United States, United Kingdom, Ireland, uh, uh, Russia, Philippines, Brazil, Canada, Germany, and Nigeria all saw the website. With 2,968 unique visitors to date on our website, uh, our popular content, as usual, is our homepage. That's the most popular because it's a landing page for a lot of the other stuff that we do. Um, the What We Do page, which uh, if, you, if anybody's checked up recently, it's got some of Brother Ken's stuff up on it now. Um, uh, the, and the live broadcast page. Our YouTube channel, over the last three months, solved 981 views. Uh, we gained three subscribers, which doesn't sound like much, but we had been stuck at 52 subscribers for a long time. We jumped up, I think, the last time, and now we're up to 58 subscribers, with the all-time views from the YouTube channel being approximately uh, 8,600 views to date. Our Facebook page, over the last three months, we reached 2,033 people. 
we have a total of uh, 574 page likes and 605 followers, with 16 of those being new in the last three months. So your mission dollars are going to, uh, to use there. Yes, Sister Donna. I, I spoke with Jared about that Wednesday night, um, and he is going to get me that stuff. You may have already, I haven't checked my email, so you may have already sent some of that stuff. Okay, but we, I, I, I already had spoken about to him Wednesday night. We have a literature page up on our website that both of the tracks, that the that one, the, the You Must Be Born Again that Jared wrote and the Why Do Bad Things Happen track that we wrote, they're both on the website on our literature page. All of his articles, including those that he wrote from before, if he still has the text, I'm going to upload all of those. So that will be uh, evergreen content that people can look at at any time. Any other questions or comments? The, the internet is one of those few things that does touch just about every corner of the globe. There's not there, and honestly, uh, Elon Musk is putting together Starlink, which is a better satellite internet. It's gonna, it's much better than what y'all had. Uh, but uh, <laughs> uh, but once he has that up, there, uh, you know, there 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 will not be a place in the world where you cannot have decent internet. So this is. I'm sure both can would say the same thing. When I went to South America, I was amazed at the internet speed. And I'm talking about people living in a in houses without electricity yeah. and their homes in shit like same thing yeah. in India. Yeah, the 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 especially the mobile market is really big for for this. And one the the last statistic I I meant to put up here. But so the total number of people that saw our content. Is aggregated from all of our sites for the last three months is 5,992 people. Um, total number of countries that saw it was 52. And our lifetime interactions, this does not include our Facebook page because Facebook doesn't keep statistics up for a lifetime, but this is for YouTube, Sermon Audio, and for um, our website. We've had over 34,242 different interactions in the lifetime of, the minist- of, the, of this ministry. So there's that. It's it is it, it is a it it is growing too. Le- this last month we saw our biggest jump for sermon audio that I've ever seen. Did we did of those two thousand whatever it was for sermon audio we did thirteen hundred in the month of January, which is a lot. And we're we're we're, and we're not talk- I'm not talking about just somebody clicking and clicking away. Sermon audio counts that you have to download the sermon for it to count. So somebody took the time to click and then wait for the download to come through, and hopefully they listened on the back end of it. Um, so it, it, it's um, we're growing, and hopefully we'll see a lot more growth out of that. Psalms chapter 18. We looked at the first, kind of the first half of the chapter. We, we, we read a lot more than we narrated, but... Uh, um, That'll happen. Does anybody remember what we talked about in the previous lesson? Yes, Bill Jr. You uh, explained to us the tip that uh, in covering several chapters, that things that would happen to David and all that, and you came in here preaching about yeah. in this chapter. We talked, we talked significantly about how this is kind of a culmination of the previous chapters that we have looked at, a lot of them, because this is... David's rejoicing at the deliverance of God. The, 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 this 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 chapter reiterates at, at at what a shield the Lord is in the time of trouble for His people. And David, up until this point, most of the chapters, with with uh, some exceptions, have just been cries for help, and then usually ending with, "But I know the Lord's got it." Um, and chapter 18 is where we, we see the actual deliverance of the Lord happen. So, um, uh, any other points? To me, it seemed like a psalm of victory. Yes, it, it, is, it, is, it is definitely. I mean, verse, verse 2 is nothing but adulation in, um, in this chapter. Anybody else?
Pa- patience, patience yields results, and patience is not something that we're that we're good at. Uh, you know, the Bible says, according to the Lord, that our life is you know is but a vapor, uh, or 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 a, or a flower that's here today and gone tomorrow. Uh, we're like grass, um, which is it is an okay. I mean, it is the perspective to have because it's God's perspective, but. We don't live in that perspective. For us, a hundred years is a long time. Um, and though our lives are fleeting in light of eternity, we have very, very narrow views of generations. Forty years is enough for, for, for three different generations to come out. Um, and it is very difficult for humans to be patient when you look at that narrow focus of time. For God... It's but a span of a moment. In God's eyes, waiting weeks or months or even years to answer you is almost like He immediately answered you. <laughs> you know, uh, if, 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 a, if a day is as if a thousand years, I mean, two, three years, that means He, I mean, you, you ask and He said, yes, can, can I help you? And, 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 but, but for us, that waiting for response is, does not always equate perfectly. Um, anybody, anything else? And that will bring us back to uh, the middle of the chapter. We kind of wrapped, and I do want to back up into some of uh, what we talked about. I think we kind of wrapped with um, a, like 28, 26, 27, 28, somewhere in there. Um, but um, it said, for, uh, let's go to 24. Therefore hath the Lord recompensed me according to my righteousness, uh, righteousness according to the clean, clean, cleanness of my hands and his eyesight. With, with, the mer- with the merciful, thou wilt show thyself merciful. With the upright man, thou wilt show thyself upright. With the pure, thou wilt shew thyself pure. And with the froward, thou wilt shew thyself froward. For thou wilt save the afflicted people, but wilt bring down high looks. For thou wilt light my candle, the Lord my God will enlighten. My dark uh, will enlighten my darkness. For by thee have I run through a troop, and by my God have I leaped over a wall. Now David starts accounting some of the things he did in the in the in the preceding verses. He talks about this, and that we ended up the conversation last week talking about this reciprocal relationship. You do one thing, there is a reaction from God on it. If you serve, He will aid. If you do not serve, He will. Recompense that as as is as is deemed necessary. There's a for for the saved. There's a very very easy contract. There's a very very easy balance for us to look at. Uh, can you work your way to salvation? I, the Bible is very clear that you can't do that. But for those of us that are saved, we do operate in that place where our our good works equal something. Because we have the blood of Christ uh, adorning us, our righteousnesses that we attempt to do are not filthy rags anymore. The best that we can come up with covered in the blood of Jesus is actually pleasing to God. And, and for that, He offers reward. Um, and then David begins to account the things that God has, has done for him. He says, uh, for, for by thee have I run through a troop... And by, uh, and by my God have I leaped over a wall. Now, I think running through a troop, I think specifically he's talking about when he, when, when he, when he took, snuck into the camp of Saul and, and took things from, from Saul's head and then ran back to the edge of the camp and said, Saul, I literally stood over your bed while you slept and didn't murder you. And, and, and you think that I mean you harm. I, 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 I don't mean you any harm. Uh, but David equates this to the power of God. We have so much in our lives that go that goes positively for us. Our worst days are still pretty good. Yeah. And our really, really good days, we say, well, I had a really good day at work. I did this today and it turned out well. I did this, I did that. And very seldom do we look to the Lord and say, you pulled me through this day. You made the day better. When, when, when in all actuality, he is in control 
of, all, uh, 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 of our day-to-day -day walk. He is in control of the things that show up in our, past, in our path. If you don't believe that, look at the book of Job. That is literally the story of a man who was just walking down the road and God said, it's time for Job to have some adversity today. And literally through the, through the devil and the tightest curveball that he could possibly throw, and Job swung and missed. Or hit, depending on how you want to view that story. He did begin by saying that the Lord giveth and he taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, the preceding chapters, he seems pretty mopey, um, but he didn't have a whole lot of encouragement either. <laughs> um, but but, but the, 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 the principle still stands. Everything that falls in our path, good or ill, comes from God. You think that he does not control? That you said, well, no. The devil is the one that works evil. Yeah, I think the devil is a is a wonderful evil working instrument. But the devil is as much a vessel as you or I. He follows God's commands, and and, and because what does he say to to God? He said, "Have you considered my servant Job?" And 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 the devil says, "I can't consider him because you have a wall built around him." And God says, "Okay, I see your point." Um, what if I tore that wall down briefly? And then the devil starts offering suggestions on how bad this can possibly be. To what extent that he will let them go. But, but know from that story, the devil is an instrument of the Lord. That means good things and bad things can come from God. We need to look for the good in our life and see that, you know, the, the, the houses and the lands and all the things that we, we talk about possessions in between, in between services, all those good things that we have in our life, an abundance of good things. I went into our laundry room, which has become like mostly a storage room with a walk path to the washer and dryer. Um, we have mounds of stuff. Most of it actually needs to be thrown away or given away to somebody because we're never going to touch it again. Never. We have so many things, we have to have a room dedicated to piling the things up. We have so many, we, I, we, we have an overhead space in our, in our den area. It was the garage. It's an overhead space. I, th I know there are boxes of clothes that neither I nor my wife will ever be able to wear again. And yet we hang on to it. We have so much stuff. We have so many great things set in our path. But these are, these are our things. These are the things that we worked for. I worked for these things. I did these things. Well, David offers an alternative point of view. Every good thing that comes, comes from the one that owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Every good, every good event that happens in your life, the opportunity to preach the word, the opportunity to teach to God's people, the opportunity and the skill with which it takes to do anything for the work of the Lord, or even just the mundanity of life. That all of that comes from God, and in a second, He can remove it. Yeah. And yet we, we, we just trot through our lives thinking that, oh, we're living by the seat of our pants and, and, and our good luck. Never once looking up, it's like Brother Junior said in his, never once looking up to the acorn tree from which the acorns fall. As for God, His way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler. For them that trust in Him, for who is for who is God save the Lord? For who is a rock save our God? David says there is a place of safety and security within the Lord. That there is uh, that is it for 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 who is God save the Lord? First of all, He puts them on the highest pedestal. He is the ruler of all, and they say for or who is a rock, save our God. So what, what David does in this verse, metaphorically speaking, he puts him on the top. He is the very peak. He is the very ruler of everything. And yet he's also, at the same time, the lowest foundation, what it all rests upon. Yeah. He, he, the highest and the lowest, the Alpha and Omega. Right. He, 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 he outlines both of them in this statement and says, who, who, who is both of these things? Our God is the only one that can actually exist and be, be both, that can, that, that, that can stand and be that, be that defensible place. You want a place where you can build your life and build your home, and, and if you build upon sinking sand, I think the New Testament's very clear about the parable, you will fall. 
And everybody in these days, you know, I, this week, all that stuff with the stock market went, went on. And, and, and I actually talked to, uh, I was cutting the hair of a banker, and he said, I said, well, what do you think about the stock, the stock thing? And he said, well, the disturbing part is to me that if you look at the 1920s, right before the, the fall, uh, fall of, the, uh, of the stock market, that people were doing very, very similar things. He said, it was not, this, this disturbs me. Uh, but people are building, you know, I, and actually my brother-in-law, uh, uh, Will, he is, he is an accountant, so he understands all that stuff. And he was showing me a chart, and it was going up, and he said, look, look at it going up. And, and, and then the minute I look at it, he said, well, of course, the minute that you look at it, it starts falling back down. And I said, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure it, had, it had to do with me looking at it. It was the reason it started falling. But you could see it going up, and you could see it going down, this little, this little graph on there. And... and Think if that was your money on the line. What a shifting, uncertain life to live. That's visibly, and, and just from a human's perspective, you can see the shifting sands there. But, but people literally build their entire lives on things that are more shifty than that. They build them on baptism. They build them on their own good works. They build them on a prayer they said as a child because someone instructed them to do so. Shifting sands. All of those things are good. Baptism is a good thing. Doing good works is a good thing. Praying to our God is a good thing. But without that foundation that comes from the Lord, none of that means anything. That's just you doing things. And you know what? It has no more meaning. None of Save the Lord. None of that has any more meaning than me waking up and going and cutting hair at the barbershop. Nothing. It, it's, it's, it's literally the same level of work. Why? Because God doesn't acknowledge you. If He doesn't know you, He doesn't acknowledge you. You know what? I'm sure there are people all over the world that do all kinds of work, but you know what? I know that most of the time the people over at Brigham Hardware are working because I can see them working. People over at the courthouse are working. I know the parking lot's always full at the grill, so people at the grill are working. And I know Tim Barrow is working because I can see, well, sometimes he is, because I can see him beside me. But for the rest of the world, I don't know them. And you know what? If you're outside of God's vision, if you're outside of the people that He set up, He doesn't know you. And you can work until you're blue in the face and you can do all these things, but He doesn't acknowledge your existence. Why? Because you're not in His sight. God, it is God that, that girdeth me with strength and maketh my way perfect. He maketh my feet like hinds feet and setteth me upon my high places. He teacheth my hands to war so that a bow of steel is, is broken by my arms. Thou hast given me the shield of thy salvation and thy right hand hath holden me up and thy gentleness hath made me great. Now, David now starts saying, not only does God place great things in our path, he gives us all the tools with which to take advantage of those moments. David said that he has he hath girded me with strength. He gave him soundness of body. And, 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 not, only, and not, not only a sound body, a strong body with which to do it. He said, he maketh my feet like hind's feet or, or a deer's foot. Swift, quick after what they're doing. Quick to go places and quick to retreat from foes. And then he setteth me on high places. He Not only did God give David a sound body, a body that could take advantage of these, but he also set him in a perfect place. You know, it's very interesting, and I think people look past this whenever they talk about the Garden of Eden, but not only did the Lord get, make the earth literally for Adam, and Adam being the crowning jewel of that crown, uh, of it, but God gave Adam every opportunity for this to be a good thing. He literally set him in the most perfect place of the most perfect world of the most perfect creation that he ever made. He and and David says in our day-to-day -day lives as Christian people, the Lord he sets us in high places. He gives us places of advantage and but we don't take advantage of it. Uh, look at I think I think a, a good a good look uh, 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 in the Bible of someone who take who took advantage in places where a lot of us would see disadvantage is Joseph. Everything that wherever Joseph found himself to be, he took all the tools that God laid it, laid before him and says I'm going to work with them. Whether that was a, a slave in Potiphar's house, whether it was a prison in the jailer with the jailers or if it was Vizier of Egypt. 
It didn't matter where he found himself to be. Joseph was using everything at his disposal to do. We all have talents, people. We all have things that we're good at. Some of us are good speakers. Some of us have musical talent. Some of us have, some of us have the ability to speak. Some of us have the ability to divide the Word of God. Some, some, of, us, some of us have... There's, there's untold things that we can do, and it can go down to the mundane. I am marginally skilled at cutting hair. You know, it's, it, 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 there's, 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 there's different things that we're, all, that we're all, but we don't take advantage of them. We've got to start using those tools and using the good bodies that God has given us. We're all, to the best of my knowledge in here, fairly healthy people. I see before me people that, that there are in excess of health, that have a little too much health. <laughs> And that's a good thing. The Lord has blessed us greatly. But you ever think that maybe that extra plate of food on the table might be so that we can go out and do something for the Lord? That the tools that are set before us are meant for something? Amen. David took advantage of these opportunities. Not only did he take advantage of them, he knew from whence they came. He saw them for what they were. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation. Now, Dave, now David gets down to the root of, of why he is the recipient of all the blessings that he has reiterated in the first part of the chapter. Because he's saved. The, the greatest blessing of them all. Not being owed anything not ever having done anything and not ever hoping to have done anything, the Lord looked down to Brother Jarrett and said, I'm going to save that one. Looking through the halls of, the, of eternity and knowing that there was nothing good in his self, he looked at Brother Ken and he said, I'm going to save that one. And for each and every saved person in here, by no merit of your own and by no, and, and by no way of ever achieving that merit, He decided to save each one of us. And on top of that, and this, He decided to make us a cake, if you will, and then He put all the icing on top of it. He made you the recipient of His inheritance. All the good things that come along with being a child of the Most High. To being, as the Bible says, joint heirs with Christ. Everything that Christ did, that He is only really worthy of. The rewards, that is, of, of that labor. He made you a partaker of it. Thou hast enlarged my steps under me, that my uh, that my feet did not slip. I have pursued mine enemies and overtaken them. Neither did I neither did I turn again till they were consumed. I have wounded them that were not able to rise. They they are fallen under my feet, for thou hast girded me with strength unto battle. Thou hast subdued uh, thou hast subdued me under those that wrote. Uh, uh, thou hast subdued under me those that rose up against me. Now, David says, with all these tools at my disposal, I go to war. And I think this is, this is the moment where we are not like David. I think even to a certain degree, we can, we can be the hogs that look up at the acorn tree and say, you know what, acorns come out of this tree and I'm eating them. And this tree is a good tree, I probably will visit it sometime again. We can, be, we can be that. We can see where the blessings of God come. We can even see the tools that He's laid out before us, the weapons of our warfare, if you will, but then we don't want to go to battle. We're, we're more and less like David than David is here. I think we're less like David was when he wrote this psalm and more like David was when he found himself uh, uh, sleeping while everybody else was at, was at the fight. We're, we're both more and less like him. We... 
we see, the, we see the instruments of our warfare. We see the strength within our bodies that He has given us to fight that warfare. We know that He can give us victory in that warfare. All that is needful for us as servants of God is to take up the sword and run onto the battlefield. You need not even fight. The power of the Lord goes before you. And yet, not today. I've got, uh, I've got so much other stuff. Like, I'm really busy right now. It's not you, it's me. But, I, you know, I, I just really... There's just so many other things that I'd rather be doing right now. I'm kind of tired. Week, work, week's work has worn me out a little bit, so maybe next week will be the best time. Or, let's get even more apathetic. Maybe if I just carry my sword to church, that'll be just enough to placate anybody else that sees me. Well, you know, they can't, we can't really say anything bad about Brother Adam because he does show up to church every Sunday. And that being the extent of our warfare, we're, the, we're literally the quartermasters of God's army. <laughs> we, we, yeah, we're, we're always at the rear and we're always enjoying a hot meal. When God is calling upon us to be warriors, not only warriors, skilled warriors, we're supposed to be look like the, uh, the, the Achilles of Greek myth, running through the battlefield invincible and swinging our sword as if we're, we're, the, the, we're a blender and all our foes are the stuff that's getting stuffed inside of it. And we can be that. That, that that's, that's the thing that boggles my mind, that, 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 doesn't, that, that, nev- that never ceases to, to amaze me, is we have all of that ability. You want to be like Paul? Go be like Paul. I, and I do mean that. I'm not saying that sarcastically. I'm not, I'm not trying to be, I don't think you're ever going to be an apostle, but I think you can do a level of work right. as much as Paul did. Just go do it. but the mundanity of everyday life and, frankly, us, instead of pitching tents, building houses in a place where we're supposed to be pilgrims, has led us to be, well, that's a battle to fight for another day. You know whose problems that probably would be? Future Adam's problems. He seems like a guy that can take care of that. And future Adam shows up the next day and says, you know who, who might, be a good, it might be better than that? I have even a better idea. Brother Larry might take care of that, (laughs) and maybe I won't have to do it at all. Stop the apathy. And and, and more more than that, stop lying both to yourself and more importantly to God on why you can't. You know, David got into the biggest trouble of his life, and it cost more lives than Uriah. because he was laying around when he should have been at the battlefield. Firmly convinced that if David had been on the front lines where kings were supposed to be... In fact, the Bible even says when kings go out to war. What was David? The king. And it had been a long and hard road to get to being king. This is one of those chapters that reiterates that uh, that very idea. But instead, he laid around... And, and he actually honestly sounds like me on my day off, Wednesday. He, he laid around in bed till about 10 o'clock, and then he went out on his front porch, and he looked over into somebody else's yard. And when he saw something that should have been something that made him turn around and go back inside, and he thought, think, maybe I should just be at war right now. It, literally anywhere else but here. I'm sorry, Lord, for what I saw. Maybe I'll send, uh, I will send a, an apology to them as well. It was an accident, but let it be. No, but David stared on. And not only did David stare on, David came up with an idea and a plan, a plan that Bathsheba could not refuse and, what more importantly, Bathsheba didn't refuse. Worst mistake of his life happened when he wasn't fighting. Why are we so, why are we so weak? Why do we sin so much? It's because we're not on the battlefield. If, you're, if, you're, if your flesh is occupied with other things... You know, one of the things with being a parent that I've noticed, uh, if you can keep kids occupied doing something, they'll very rarely get into trouble. They don't have time. And, and whether that's setting them to work or saying, hey, y'all go play outside or, do we, or, or, or do, find something. 
but not being biblical, the old saying, the idle hands are the devil's workshop, is very, 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 very true. Get to battle. Do something. It's expected of you. Lord didn't save you just to sit around. Lord didn't make you a chosen vessel just to look, you know, it, you're not one of those like decorative vessels, vessel pots you buy and then it sits there until you dust it the next time you come by it. No, he's not interested in having, you know, a, a better homes and garden house. Our Lord God wants vessels that he can put things into and use them for what they were used for. Thou hast given me the necks of my enemies that I might destroy them that hate me. And you will prevail. Going with God, you will prevail. Some of the most ridiculous battle plans in history are listed in the Bible, and yet the, Isra the, the army of the Israelites came out on top every time. Ridiculous ideas. Let's go up against a Midianite army that literally looks like the sand of the sea with 300 people with pots. <laughs> Not only 300 people with pots, but 300 men that instead of drinking water out of their hand like a normal person, laps it up like dogs. These were crazy men. <laughs> 300 crazy men and Gideon, and they won that battle. Jericho, a walled, strong, strong city, we're going to march around it until something happens. With Joshua, potentially, a one-legged man. You're going to prevail in a battle as long as a man's arms are above his head. Let's send one lone son-in-law of the only two faithful men in, in, of the Israelites against giants. One man, Othniel, the son-in-law of Caleb, went and killed Goliath's progenitors. Here's an even better one, probably most relatable to the Psalms here, and the last one we'll talk about. Let's send a shepherd boy with a sling... When we literally have the ta a man that is head and shoulders taller than everybody in Israel with mail and, and strength to take on Goliath, let's send a small, ruddy, probably fairly scrawny, David grew into a man, but he was not a man when he went and <laughs> faced Goliath, down with a sling and not five spiky stones, not five bladed stones. He, David wasn't wrapping the stones in barbed wire. <laughs> Five smooth stones to take on a giant. But in all of these situations, what do we see? They prevailed. You are no less or more than those people in those stories. Against insurmountable odds, we can succeed. The mission work that God has laid before us, God has given us power for to go into all the world. If we're going and doing that, you can guarantee that God's going to be behind us. Right. Just go and do it. Amen. Any questions or comments about today's lesson? If there be nothing, if all hearts and minds are cleared, we will be dismissed. Have a great week.